Hi friends, myself A.K. Mahdum, working as a lecturer in SIT Polytechnic Edra, Mechanical Engineering Department. Today, in this session, we discuss the next unit of advanced manufacturing process, that is gear manufacturing, that is unit number 3. This chapter having a weightage of 10 marks and total te teaching hours are allotted for this chapter is the 10 hours. So, beginning with the what are the lecture contents. So, before that, I request all of you to follow and subscribe my YouTube channel. First of all, what are the lecture contents are we are covered in this session? First thing is the functions of gear manufacturing method, second one is the types of gears, next one is the gear manufacturing methods. So this much contents we are discussing in this whole session. First of all, what is gear cutting? A gear is a rotating, rotating machine part having cut teeth which mesh with another to the part to transmit torque. Actually, gear is used for transmit the power from one end to another end. For that purpose, actually we are using the gear. Next, gear is a cut from a round blank carrying teeth along its periphery. Actually gear is manufactured from the blank of the workpiece. Over that blank we have produced the periphery teeth. Then afterwards we are called it is a gear. Next, gear cutting is a specified specialized job. That is the important thing. Gear cutting is any machining process for creating a gear means Whenever we, we called as a gear, there are the so many processes are required to manufacture the gear. Means so many machining processes we want to carry out. Then afterwards, that gear blank which is converted into the form of gear. Next, the most common gear cutting processes include hoeing, coaching, milling, and grinding. So many processes are actually used for manufacturing the gear. So a few of listed over here. Next, such cutting operations may occur either after or Instead of forming processes such as forging, extruding, investment casting or sand casting, such operations are actually occur at the initial stage of forming processes. Next, types of gear. Basically, gears are classified into the two groups. First of all, on the basis of shaft are parallel to each other, two types of gears are mounted on the shaft to transmit the power. On that basis, there are the uh, few gears are available. First one is the spur gear, second one is the helical gear, and next one is the rack and pinion. Means these three types, which are comes under the shaft, are parallel to each other. And two two types of gear are mounted on the shaft to transmit the power. So this is the first classification. Second one is the on the basis of shafts are non-intersecting and non-parallel, non co-planner then power transmitting gears are first of all there is the spiral gear is there second one is the worm and worm wheel means this type of the gears are come under the on the basis of shafts are non-intersecting non-parallel and non-co-planner so these are the two types of uh, that type of gears so here in this figure also there are the we have briefly uh, shown over here First one is the parallel shaft, under that there is the spur gear is there, helical gear is there, rack and pinion gear is there. Next whenever there is the intersecting shaft is there, in that under that there is the bevel gears, straight gear or spiral, spiral gear is there. Next one is the skew shaft, under that there is the spiral gear, worm and worm wheel. These types of the gears are actually, uh, we are classified under the types of gear. First one is the spur gear. Here, it is the gear straight teeth parallel to the axis that is a very important thing of the spur gear means every teeth which is a parallel to the axis next no axial thrust at the time of power transmission there is no axial thrust will be takes place at the time of power transmission no next uh, line contact parallel to axis means whenever we want to transmit the power from one shaft to another shaft or one end to another end in that case there is the line of contact with each and every gear which is meshed with each other 
there is the parallel to axis. Next one is the impact loading leads to impact stresses and noise. Whenever we mesh the gear with each other, in that case, there is the impact force will be occurred, and due to which there may be a chances of uh, some noise will be generated and some stresses will be occurred at the time of power transmission. Next, external and internal, both the types of uh, spur gears are available for a uh, different mechanism, different application. Some of few of uh, gear types which are showing over here. So what are the different applications of spur gears? The spur gears are used in automobile gearboxes, machine tool gearboxes, industrial gearboxes, etc. So many applications are there, but a few of, most of the uh, spur gears are used in the automobile industry or automobile gearboxes, machine tool gearboxes, industrial gearboxes, etc. The spur gears are mainly used for low speed application. Means whenever there is the low speed is there in that case, the spur gear, the spur gear is the best one. Next one is the helical gear. This is the another one important type of gear which is used in many important machineries or different applications. The teeth are curved and helical in shape. Means actually in a previous spur gear, there is the teeth are parallel to the axis. That is the basic thing. But here in the helical gear, the teeth are inclined with the axis. So that is the important uh, difference between the spur and helical gear. Here, each and every gear which is having a certain inclined angle with that axis, and there is the uh, called as a helical shape. Next, uh, two meshing gears having a same helix angle. That is a very important thing. Whenever we want to transmit the power or transmit the torque from one shaft to another shaft, there is the that two gears are there, but that two gears having the same angular teeth. Then and then only we are properly meshed with each other and transmit the power from one shaft to another shaft. Next, gradual load application. Here one important thing: there is a properly meshing with each other. There is a gradual load is applying over the each and every teeth of the helical gear. And next, axial thrust is present. Because of there is the angular teeth, there is the axial thrust is occurred at the time of meshing of gear or transmission of the power from one end to or one shaft to another shaft. Here some glimpses are there or some uh, animated images are also there. Here in this image there is a how the actual meshing will be takes place. Helical gear. What are the different applications? The helical gears are used in high speed stages of automobile gear boxes, machine tool gear boxes, industrial gear boxes. Means whenever we want to convert the speed, whenever we want to uh, increase the or raise the speed or high speed type of applications are there. In that case, helical gears are actually used. Next, the helical gears are used in high speed application like steam and gas, gas turbine. That is a very important application because there is the gradual forces are acting over that each and every teeth of the helical gear. So that's why there is the Whenever the high speed application is there, in that case, helical gears are actually used. Next, rack and pinion. This is the one more important and different type of gear, which is comes under the different types of gear. First one is the special of special case of spur gear. This is also same like a spur gear. Here the teeth are parallel to the axis of that shaft. One gear having an infinite diameter means there is a this rack having an infinite diameter or infinite number of teeth are available over that surface. So that teeth which are straight and due to which there is another type of a spur gear but only the difference is what? Here instead of another one circular gear, circular dimension gear, instead of that there is the one rack is present over here and that rack which will be helpful for a transmit the power for a different application. This particular gearbox gear type which is used for a convert rotary motion into a translatory motion that is a very important advantage or use of the this rack and pinion gear. Some glimpses are showing over here, here there is the bottom portion that is a rack and this one is the pinion. This pinion which is give the motion to this rack and due to which there is a uh, rotary motion which is converted into the translatory motion. Some animated images are also showing over here. Next, straight bevel gear. This is the another one important type of a gear 
the teeth one straight radial to the point of intersection to the shaft axis and vary in cross section throughout their length so that is, this is the very important construction of this type of bevel gear used for shaft perpendicular to each other that is a very important requirement whenever we want to transmit the power from one one end to another end in that case both the shafts which are perpendicular to each other then and then only we can easily transmit the power from one end to another end best example is the hand drill machine which is shown over in this animated images also here we are given the do the motion by main hand wheel drive then of course chuck start rotating at the same same case there is the uh, bevel gear which is helpful for converting the uh, that rotary motion to the that chuck itself next spiral bevel gear this is one more another type of bevel gear when the teeth of bevel gear is inclined at an angle to one face of the bevel they known as spiral bevel gear means here the some angular faces of the teeth which are present over that gear teeth so that's why this type of a gear we are generally called as a spiral bevel gear they are smoother and quicker in operation because of some angular faces over the teeth surface there is a the very smooth meshing will be takes place due to which there is the no certain noise will be created at the time of uh, meshing of a two gears and it is a very quick uh, quarter in operation means what there is the no sound will be generated at the time of meshing so these are the very important advantage of this spiral bevel gear what are the different applications of bevel gears first one is the uh, the bevel gears are used in differential gear box of automobile that is a very important application of the bevel gear because we want to convert the motion we want to uh, smooth operation we want to require at the time of uh, meshing of gear in that case the differential gear box mainly used the bevel gears next they are also used in the steel gear boxes where the input and output shafts are required at right angles whenever there is the Uh, two shafts which are perpendicular to each other and we want to transmit the power from one shaft to another shaft in that case there are the bevel gears are only suitable and we can easily transmit the power from one end to another end whenever their that shafts are parallel uh, sorry perpendicular to each other next one is the spiral gear used for skew shaft that is very important by suitable choice angle for meshing gears the two shafts can be set at any angle means this is the one more important application of this spiral gear means at any angle you can easily set in case of bevel gears there is the basic requirement of power transmission is all there is the two shafts are perpendicular to each other then and then only we can transmit the power from one end to another end. but whenever we go through the spiral gear in that case also there is the any angle of the shaft can be we can easily transmit the power from one end to another end means there is the no certain restrictions like a bevel gear in the spiral gear type of meshing system so that's why this is the very important advantage of this spiral gear means at any angle you can mesh the gear and transmit the power from one shaft to another shaft some images which are shown over here next one is the worm and worm gear it is the uh, another important type of uh, gear it is worm and worm gear here worm is made of screw thread shaped teeth it is the this portion which is called as a worm and this one is the worm wheel bigger gear called as worm wheel no doubt there are the n number of teeth which are present over that bigger wheel or maybe called as a worm wheel a large speed reduction up to 100% means whenever we want to reduction in the speed is required in that case worm and worm wheel type of gear gears are actually used for different machines and this is the application of this worm and worm wheel. next what of the application first one is the, the worm gear drives are used in lifting or hoisting devices cranes lifts conveyors these are the few applications of the worm gears means whenever there is a heavy 
loads are you want to carry in that case there is the worm gears are very helpful for uh, in that type of condition like oil sting devices are there cranes are there lifts are there conveyors are there next they are used in all application where high reduction ratio is required that is another important application whenever the high uh, speed reduction is the required in that case also there is the worm worm wheel type of gears are actually used another one more application that is uh, gears used for connecting to non intersecting and perpendicular axis that is a very important application whenever non intersecting and uh, perpendicular axis are there in that case there is the this type of gears are best suitable to transmit the power with a high load carrying capacity for that purpose worm gears are worm and worm type of uh, gears are actually used for a different application next shafts are hypoid bevel gears skew bevel gears and spiral or cross regulator gears this type of a uh, shafts are used for um, this type of applications of worm and worm wheel type of gears next another important part of the gear uh, processes gear manufacturing processes what are the different manufacturing processes are there based on the material removal process also called gear manufacturing with the generating it is a very important thing by the rotary wheel milling with the disc and end mill cutters under the generating methods we are removing the certain quantity of material from the work piece or gear blank and then afterwards manufacture the gear under that there is a rotary wheel milling with a disc and end mill cutters that is the first type second one is the by rotating thread wheel gear hubbing by reciprocating or rotary tools like a gear shaping with a rack cutter and pinion cutter and with a single point cutting tools means this is the first uh, classification that is a material removal process means we are removing the certain quantity of a material from that uh, gear blank and then afterwards we manufacture the uh, gear actually next one is the next classification with the forming process there is a cold forming is there and second one is the gear rolling process so these are the uh, forming processes under that there are the we directly form the shape of that gear itself according to the size and shape which is required for a, a, a different application next one is the with casting this is the very important uh, manufacturing process of a gear because so many applications having a different dimensions of a gear which is required for a different application whenever there are the heavy uh, loads you want to carry like a tractor gears are there some heavy components you want to rotate in that case this type of casting gears are best one because they gears having a carrying capacity with a high load high thrust load it is easily sustained by that casting gear for that purpose with the casting there is the uh, different gears which is best suitable for a heavy loads next one is the under that casting there is the die casting is there investment casting is there sand sand casting is there these are the various types of casting processes for a manufacturing of a gear which is generally used according to the different application and requirement of the uh, that gear next last one is the gear making with the uh, the powder metallurgy process this is the last method or uh, last process of gear manufacturing that is uh powder metallurgy process with the help of that powder metallurgy we can manufacture the gear but it is a very rare manufacturing process next gear manufacturing methods first one is the casting in that casting gears are cast in metal molds that is a very important thing second one is the cheapest method of producing gear it is a very important advantage of this casting process next one is the used for heavy gears we already discussed that part whenever there is a heavy application like a tractor type tractor application for that purpose some meshing of gears are required or maybe some cranes there is the heavy loads are applying at the time of meshing of gears in that case this type of a casting gears which are generally used for this particular application next 
not efficient. So that is the drawback of this casting process of gear manufacturing method. Next, sand casting, die casting, injection molding, these are the various uh, casting processes are actually used for a gear manufacturing process. Next, another second type of gear manufacturing that is rolling. Under that rolling, there are gears are produced by hot rolling or cold rolling process. Means above recrystallization temperature or below recrystallization temperature. There are the two uh, methods of rolling, which is generally used. Of, we are called as a hot rolling or cold rolling process. That type of a gear manufacturing process are generally used for a hot rolling and cold rolling process. Next, gear blank is rolled against master gear to produce desired teeth on its periphery. It is a simple way of manufacturing of gear because whenever we call it as a hot rolling process, there is the recrystallization temperature is above. So that's why we can easily change its shape and whatever the master gear is there, that gear, it will be produced on its periphery. There is some application which is shown over here in this image because rolling is a very simple process of a manufacturing gear because whatever you want to create over that surface in that case there is the some uh, master gear which is compressed or pressed over that uh, surface of gear blank and easily manufacture the teeth of that periphery of that gear next one is the extrusion there is the gears are made from bar by extrusion through forming die there is the various uh, bar which is extruded from the die and then afterwards there is the teeth will be produced over that uh, gear blank. This is the very simple process like a, whenever you want to manufacture the plastic gears, there is the extrusion is the best suitable for that type of product. It is then finished to size, means once you pass on to the, to the uh, forming die, then afterwards whatever the product is generated that is a finished product or finished dimensional product. Next, used for small sizes. Whenever the uh, minimum diameter gears are there in that case, this type of extrusion process which is generally used. Next, it is used for mass production. That is a very important application of the extrusion process. Whenever the bulk quantity which is required for a uh, different application or you plan for a mass quantity manufacturing in that case there is the extrusion which is the best one next stamping this is the another method of a gear manufacturing process small and thin gears are manufactured by stamping process the best best example is the your wrist watches gears some small gears are there that type of gears are manufactured with the help of this stamping process next one is the it is done by punch and die with the help of power press. Some heavy power presses are used for a easily stamp the uh, gear blank and manufacture the gear over that surface. Next, accuracy and surface finish. Because of stamping, there is the we can easily maintain the surface finish and accuracy of that gear, and that is the very important advantage of this type of stamping manufacturing method of a gear. Next, gears used in a toys, blocks, etc. Already we have discussed that part. Whenever there is the small gears which is required for a wristwatch, gears are there, or different clocks, gears are there, or maybe some uh, children toys, toys gears are there, some small gears are there. That type of gears are easily manufactured with the help of this stamping process of gear manufacturing method. Example, punching, forging, etc. So many stamping. Uh, examples are there any one any one process or any one method we are used for a stamping purpose either punching forging or maybe the few uh, another processes are also there anyone you can choose it and according to your convenience you can easily implement into stamping process also next powder metallurgy this is the very important process of gear manufacturing method because Whenever the small, highly accurate gears are produced through this process, in that case, there is a powder metallurgy is the best one because whenever there is the accuracy and 
highly accuracy you want to maintain in that case powder metallurgy is the best suitable for a gear manufacturing method next machining this is the vastly used gear manufacturing methods because so many industry they are removing the material from that gear blank and then afterward set the shape and size of a gear so this machining method is a very important method of gear manufacturing process here gears are produced by gear shaping gear hobbing there are the different machining methods which is used for a gear manufacturing process so this much about the uh, gear introduction or types of gear gear manufacturing methods thank you thank you very much